This is Citizens Council Forum, America's number one public affairs program, where prominent Americans report to the nation on important issues. This weekly series of discussions is presented coast to coast by Citizens Council Forum, a nonprofit educational corporation with the cooperation of public-spirited broadcasters who share our belief that Americans must be informed to remain free. Now, here is the producer of Citizens Council Forum, Dick Morphew. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Citizens Council Forum. It's a real pleasure to have back on today's broadcast Governor George C. Wallace of Alabama. Governor Wallace, these are busy times for you. Thank you very much for being with us today. Dick, it's a pleasure to be with you again. Governor Wallace, the demonstrations in Selma and other parts of the state of Alabama have been very much in the headlines recently, and I'd like to uh, go into the subject with you again today, if we might. Uh, first, I'd like to ask you this. The demonstrations have been characterized to the nation as being over the so-called right to vote. Is this really what they're all about, in your opinion? No, that is not uh, what they're about, because a person who wants to vote can vote in Alabama and can qualify if they can uh, qualify under the laws of this state and the uh, registration laws administered impartially and fairly and if they are not there is a Civil Rights Act passed in 64 that takes care of every contingency of this sort and therefore if anyone feels aggrieved they have a perfect right to ask the Justice Department to go into court for them because the law provides that uh, the federal government itself can provide all the attorneys and, and uh, initiate the litigation. So this is just really not the case. Many of the people who are leading the demonstrations belong to many communist front organizations and they are just here for the purpose of, of disrupting. We have an example here in Montgomery where a group of out-of-state folks who came and marched in front of the state capital of Alabama, uh, some local Negro citizens marched with them, but they left after a reasonable period of time as they said they would according to the city police, but these then stayed from 12 o'clock until 1.30 the next morning. Uh, these were mostly from out of state. So I don't know that these kind of people are demonstrating for the right to vote. I will say also that they are at this moment, as I'm talking to you, in a church in Montgomery, and the deacons, uh, the Negro deacons and elders have tried to get them out of the church, and just a moment ago they cut the gas and the water and the lights off. Even the Negro uh, church people in the city of Montgomery are disgusted with the activities of these out-of-state uh, troublemakers. Governor Wallace, it's interesting to note that uh, the cry of police brutality is raised whenever uh, southern law enforcement authorities take any action to uh, curb some of the excesses of these demonstrations, and yet uh, the virtually the same tactics are used uh, by police in Washington, D.C., and forcibly removing demonstrators, uh, demonstrating supposedly for the same things in the White House and in the uh, headquarters building of the Department of Justice. Uh, do you care to comment on this? I have pictures uh, on my desk at the moment that shows uh, club swinging policemen in Philadelphia and New York and Rochester and in Los Angeles and uh, there are no scenes nor no pictures to compare uh, with these uh, and uh, as I recall they certainly uh, broke up uh, these lawless demonstrations as they should have and uh, you always hear the cry of police brutality in every state in the Union where a lawless element uh, is caused to disperse. Uh, the cause for, for this and the necessity for breaking up a demonstration comes not from the police, but from those who uh, march in the defiance of local city, state, and federal law and rulings. Now, Governor Wallace, uh, after a recent episode in Selma where police... Uh removed the demonstrators from a major transcontinental highway, there were so-called sympathy demonstrations staged in such places as New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Do you see this as part of a pattern to undermine confidence in law enforcement throughout the nation? In fact, uh, in every country in the world in which uh, uh, the communists have taken over, the first thing that they have done is to undermine people's confidence in the police. But I can say to you here and now, if it were not for the fine police and law enforcement officials in every state in this union, it wouldn't be safe to ride in the streets, much less walk in them. And my hand is off uh, to the police of this nation who are today carrying a great burden. 
uh, a burden to the extent that it has damaged their health. Um, uh, in my own state here, we've had numbers of officers who have suffered heart attacks as a result of continuous duty against uh, a law lawless element of this sort. Although I would say that our instructions have always been, even in the dispersion of lawless elements, is to use the least amount of force necessary because I don't like to see anyone get hurt, even if he's a lawbreaker. Just what extent has the federal government played in these demonstrations in your state of Alabama, Governor Wallace? Have uh, federal officials actively encouraged the demonstrations, for example? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't want to say things that I'm not sure of. I know that uh, Leroy Collins has been here and in Selma, although I've had no contact with him either in person or otherwise, nor has he had any contact with anybody from my office. He's the director of the He's Community the, Relations Service. That, that is correct. Now, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say that uh, anyone is encouraging them on the spot. I do know that uh, many of those in, in politics in this country uh, have, by their approval of demonstrations, expressed uh, publicly uh, to the press, has certainly encouraged these demonstrations that are supposed to be nonviolent but always wind up with violence. Does there seem to be sort of a double standard in regards to these demonstrations? That is, uh, do many well, people in political life think that they're perfectly all right in the Deep South, but let's not have any demonstrations in Washington or New York or Chicago? I, w I wonder how long that uh, they would allow demonstrations in, on Times Square or uh, at uh, the Boston Commons or uh, uh, the Loop in Chicago. They broke one up in the Loop in Chicago a week ago and used more club swinging uh, than they have done in Alabama. At the World's Fair recently, when they tried to uh, stop the World's Fair and stall in. Uh, they broke it up by swinging clubs, and the pictures I saw showed people lying on the ground unconscious with blood running down the street. There's been no picture like that uh, from out of Alabama. So uh, they do set a double standard. The press and politicians set a double standard insofar as the maintenance of law and order is concerned in Alabama and in other regions. Why has the Deep South and the states of Alabama and Mississippi in particular. In your opinion, Governor Wallace, why has this region been singled out for these demonstrations? Well, I'm not sure other than to say that the people of our region have been very independent and outspoken against these trends in our country that uh, will destroy the individual liberty and freedom of our citizens and the free enterprise system, the property ownership system, and therefore the liberals and the pro-communists communists and the troublemakers despise uh, the independent people of this uh, region. As I received a letter from a Catholic priest the other day from a New England state, a most uh, a strongly written letter, a fine written letter in which he said that the most persecuted people on the face of this earth at this moment are the people of Alabama and of Mississippi. Governor Wallace, uh, what do you suppose would be the reaction in Washington and in other levels of government if the white people of the South were to demonstrate using the same tactics and the same methods that are being used by the Negro demonstrators today? I would say that the reaction would be uh, swift, and I would say that the reaction would be uh, that it would be stopped in uh, a short notice and uh, with whatever force was necessary to stop it. And I'm glad to say that uh, uh, the overwhelming majority of the Negro citizens of Alabama and of Mississippi and of our own region are not engaged in these uh, demonstrations, and they are to be commended themselves along with the restraint of the white people of our area. And I hope that restraint and patience on the part of the good Negro and white people of our region continues to last, and someday this too shall pass. Just exactly what is your position uh, in view of all of these demonstrations? Uh, just uh, what instructions do you issue to the people uh, under your command for dealing with uh, demonstrations? My instructions are that at any demonstration to use no force uh, to hurt no one unless it is absolutely necessary because I don't like to see anyone hurt even though he's a law violator if it can uh, be uh, prevented otherwise. And so we uh, feel that this, shall, this will be uh, the policy of our state. We do not uh, relish the idea of having to uh, injure any person, regardless of his race, color, creed, religion, or national origin. What about the uh, use of school children, uh, children in the elementary grades, uh, uh, to take part in these demonstrations? Well, I think this is, of course, uh, uh, something that uh, is almost unthinkable because it endangers their lives and... Uh, 
Uh, it doesn't. It instills in them uh, an attitude that we can uh, disobey the law and get by with it, which is not a good attitude for children to to grow up uh, and have. And I think it's deplorable that children are used in these demonstrations. Governor Wallace, I know that during the past few years you have uh, made quite an acquaintanceship among the people of this nation generally, not just of the South. What are you hearing from the people these days? Does it appear that the American public is understanding the underlying causes of these demonstrations? Well, of course, we have uh, thousands of letters and telegrams, and of course we have pro and con. But I think the, the, the con, uh, you can check it and you'll see that we hear sometime usually from the same people. But we have had a tremendous uh, uh, inpouring of mail and telegrams from people in every state in the Union uh, that, uh, that indicate they uh, realize uh, what is behind uh, these demonstrations that are now occurring all over these United States. Just where is this situation leading, Governor Wallace? What do you see for the future? Unless it's checked, it will lead, of course, to uh, virtual rebelliousness against federal, state, and city authority throughout the country and could, of course, eventually paralyze uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the development of our country and of also uh, it will bring about a complete breakdown of law and order. And uh, I believe before that takes place, though, that there's going to be an awakening on the part of those in all uh, areas of government, and they're going to put a stop to it. Governor Wallace, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Dave. Our guest on today's edition of Citizens Council Forum has been Governor George C. Wallace of Alabama. This special program has come to you from Montgomery, Alabama. Join us again next week at the same time, and we'll be back with another program in your Citizens Council Forum series. Till then, Dick Morphew speaking coast to coast, saying thanks a lot for being with us. So long, everybody. <laughs> Citizens Council Forum is dedicated to the preservation of our American tradition of freedom. If you agree that individual liberty and constitutional government must be preserved, if you want to do something positive and worthwhile to help protect our freedom, then we want to hear from you. Just write to Citizens Council, Jackson, Mississippi. We'll be happy to send you, without obligation, literature showing how you can help. Address your card or letter to Citizens Council, Jackson, Mississippi. America's number one public affairs series is presented coast to coast each week by Citizens Council Forum, a nonprofit educational corporation. Assisted by a grant from the Mississippi State Sovereignty Commission, an official agency of the state of Mississippi. Join us next week for another informative discussion and remind your friends to tune in. It's time to take a stand. By working together, we can and will safeguard our freedom.